Okay. You know what's a cool concept? Start paying trans people of color for their work. Start giving trans people of color credit. Or how about just start letting trans people of color live? Whoa, <laughs> radical. Welcome. Today I wanted to talk about the situation surrounding the new Netflix documentary, The Death and Life of Marsha P. Johnson. I'm like a week or two late, but like, what's new? If you hadn't heard, there was a documentary that dropped on Netflix recently about trans icon, hero, and activist Marsha P. Johnson. And just after it came out, it also came to light that a lot of the work was actually stolen from a trans woman of color named Raina Gossett by the director David Franz. While the conditions surrounding it are, like, obviously trash, I'm really glad that I've gotten the chance to find out about Raina's work and learn more about that after watching and listening to videos of her giving talks. I feel really like connected to and inspired by her words. She is really involved in a lot of important work that I think we should all care about. So like and maybe after watching this video go look her up, learn some more about what she's up to and what she's been doing because like she's a great person. So I was actually pretty hyped that a documentary about such an important person who is often overlooked was coming to such a popular platform such as Netflix. And I ended up watching it the day it came out. And the following day, I saw Janet Mock repost Raina's initial post about the film. So Raina has actually been working for years doing archival and research work on Marsha, Sylvia Rivera, and their work creating STAR, which stands for Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries. From my understanding, Understanding of it all. She was working with Sasha Wurzel to create their own documentary and even got to recording interviews and applying for grants, which is where David France, the director of this documentary, got wind of the project and essentially swooped it for himself, followed by gaining access to funds off of his previous successes and white male privilege, and then making a film capitalizing off the death of a black trans woman. Since then, Reina and Sasha have put out a very detailed statement that if you're interested, I definitely suggest you give it a read and listen to their words and their accounts rather than just listening to my thoughts as a viewer and kind of random bystander. But I definitely have some thoughts and kind of wanted to talk about it here because this is really something that happens all the time. How often do you hear stories of marginalized people in mainstream media? How often are those stories told by said marginalized people? How often are the experiences of marginalized people's lives altered for the consumption of privileged people? How often are marginalized people able to benefit off telling their own stories? While people with more privilege are able to resell stories that aren't their own for endless gain. As a marginalized person, you're never allowed to tell your own story or a story that reflects people like you. Instead, they'll make money telling the story of your death. You know, I just feel like we have to look at all of the layers of everything happening here. We have a cis white man making a documentary capitalizing off of, as the title itself says, the death and life of a black trans woman. Capitalizing on the morbidity of her death and the morbidity of the violence and death of trans and gender non-conforming people and predominantly trans women of color, like Marsha. We have the work of a trans woman of color being stolen and turned into capital for a cis white man. His white male privilege removes him enough from the marginalization of being being an openly gay man and member of the LGBTQIA plus community to still take from and benefit off of trans people of color. It's the LGBT plus community, but we're still not acknowledging and fighting for a T, trans people. And when we do, we're still not uplifting trans voices to do so. And then there's the documentary itself, which I honestly have very mixed opinions on. Uh, being the death and life of Marsha P. Johnson, it definitely has a focus on her death, which makes sense because the title, but I don't know. In some ways, I do feel like it could have obviously focused more on her life and what she did maybe just a thought it was set up like an episode of cold case files but it never really comes to a conclusion while it digs up information and leads it never really comes to too much of an in-depth theory i guess considering solving the case is the direction and focus the film kind of went we never really come to a conclusion of the case Instead, we're low-key told to believe the autopsy reports and believe her death was a suicide or it was accidental. And even though we're led to believe this through a kind of side eye at that thought, it's still like low-key the conclusion the documentary leaves you with. So you're telling me that I should believe what the police and medical examiner say about the death of a black trans sex worker in New York in the 90s because it's so unheard of for the police to lie 
or autopsies have incorrect information, or cases being completely swept under the rug. How many other trans women have been found dead in New York alone since Marsha? How many do we not even know about? How many more will this happen to? I'm torn between outright telling you to boycott the film altogether and not, but ultimately if you haven't, you shouldn't watch the documentary on Netflix to support Reyna. You should instead wait for and watch her film, Happy Birthday Marsha, coming out in 2018, rather than watching a film made off of the stolen efforts, work, and lives of trans women of color. On the other hand, I do see it as something important for cis people to see. I'm not telling you to view it through other sources, but I'm also like not not telling you to do that. But to see a documentary that does focus on the death of a trans woman and talk at least somewhat about violence and harassment that trans and gender non-conforming people face. But yet again, there's probably better documentaries out there with a specific focus point on violence and the trans community and the ways that said violence and murder ties into varying intersections. I was talking to a trans friend of mine, hey JC, about this like right after I watched it. And as a trans person, this documentary didn't really tell me anything I didn't already know and feel about violence towards people like me but seeing it all laid out in front of you where you can visualize it is a kind of traumatizing experience in itself and this documentary didn't even dive that deep into the broad spectrum of violence towards trans and gender non-conforming people like at the end of the day that was a documentary primarily about one person so i can't even imagine how hard it would be to watch a film about the violence and murders of trans people on a more collective no, I guess. But yet again, I feel like that is something that is more suited for cis viewers. For people who are outside of the experience and existence and understanding to watch and be informed and take in. Take something away from it rather than just further traumatizing trans people with the incredible shortcomings and faults of reality. Every day I think about the fact that I could be another statistic, another number. How by just existing, I'm more likely to be sexually assaulted, beaten, stabbed, shot, murdered, for there not to be justice found in my murder. Expecting to face discrimination in jobs, housing, medical fields, everywhere. These are things that I already know and think about, but things that cis people don't have to think about. And if we want anything to change, and if any cis people watching actually want progress, these are things that you need to think about too. I love a light topic. So yeah, um, really as per usual, um, you know, support trans people of color, support trans people of color's work, learn more about trans activists. Um, yet again, I'm very happy that I now know of Reyna and I can continue to learn from her work and do my own research into her work. And um, yeah, uh, capitalism is trash. As really this boils down to a capitalistic issue. It's more profitable to sell the stories of marginalized people by paying less marginalized people to do so. Because why would you, why would you pay people that you don't think are people? <sighs> we come in peace. Subscribe. Bring your videos whenever they get posted in social media wrap description. Goodbye. So it's the time of the video where I'm probably getting really annoying by doing this, but like, hey, I guess this is now the closing of every video. <laughs> self-promotion i have a patreon account and if you would like to become a patreon supporter and help me out the link is in the description and yeah that would be super cool you can get things like special drawings sneak peeks at things i'm working on i can send you paintings and like handmade pins and stuff there's all sorts of things and um yeah hope you're having a great day